Okay, we're here today. Um, it's been a while since we've had a video on these percussion guns, and uh, here we have Hillbilly One. Like last time, he's going to do he's going to do a video about this gun, and um, this is Hillbilly One. And as before, we've seen on a few videos, he's going to talk about this thing because he knows more about it than me. So away you go, Hillbilly One. Yeah, well, today we're looking <laughs> at an eighteen forties. Constabulary carbine. Um, Being a carbine, it's got a 26 and a half inch barrel, which sounds long, but in, back in these days, uh, 26 and a half inches was a short barrel, a carbine, and it's 65 calibre instead of the muskets, which was 75 calibre. 65 calibre, why? Might probably my little finger fits in there would be a 65 caliber so i'll sort of remember that for future reference thank you mr hillbilly uh one don't get it stuck or we'll don't get it stuck it out, yeah. yeah um now in these days uh from the days of the brown bess and onwards the barrels were pinned to the stock you can see various pins there and the barrel underneath has got wee loops on it so these pins go through the loops and secure it to the stock. And very hard to get the the the, the barrel off, is it? Or they generally rust in. A rust in. And yeah, it's quite an effort to make something. Yeah, to get them out. A lot of these haven't been touched for a hundred years. Probably even longer, isn't it? Because of the age, wouldn't it? It hasn't been yeah. touched for maybe longer than that by the amount of pitting it's got on it. But it sort of adds to the flavour of the of the rifle. Oops. Sorry, I was just taking a photo a bit lower than where it should have been. <laughs> yep. Yep. But despite the pitting, the proof marks are still quite visible here. In which we've got the, the proof marks over there. Yep. Yep. And they've got different vary of proof marks, probably the inspection stamps, etc. And made by Liege or no? I sort of see a little bit of a crown. Maybe I'm just seeing different things, but I, no, you know, no, that's just my. I believe these are English proof marks. English proof marks on yeah. this thing, yeah. and that's mainly where it is. It might be some proof marks at the bottom of the barrel, but we wouldn't know that uh, without these, taking. And these on. early ones are nearly always on the top. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay then. Right. We'll talk about the um, trigger, and I'll oh, start with the end of it. Eh? Shall we start with the end? Because. We should always, oh no, the front of it, the front. This is called the front, is it? The muzzle end. The muzzle end, the muzzle end, yep. Yeah. So we've probably got the original ramrod there, haven't we? I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, the pitting and ageing matches the rest of it. Yeah. And we've got an unusual early device called a Lovell's catch. Lovell's catch? Yeah, and it took a socket bayonet which went over the muzzle and Lovell's patent catch pressured it to hold it in place. These didn't survive very long, they became outdated. Mm, yep. Got the nice early ramrod pipes. And they go what fair way all the way the length of the barrel, these ramrods go right to the end of the barrel, do they? Or they sort of Go three well, quarters up. They yeah. normally stop in here against yeah. the yeah. metal stop. Yeah. Um, obviously, they have to be long enough to yeah. load, mm. you know, powder and charge in yeah. there. And we've got no visible marks on the locking plate. That's right, locking plate that, that I can see anyway. Uh, um, the lock plate would have been marked. Would have been marked. I can just see traces there, which are probably a crown. Yeah. Probably a Victorian crown, but it's mostly obliterated. This is right. Us. This this gun was made right on the start of Victoria's reign. Um, possibly. Well, possibly earlier. Earlier than Victoria. Well, so, so it probably might not have a crown of Victoria. We've probably got an earlier crown in here, which sort of makes this quite cool. Uh, which you really can't see. We can't really see. Uh, yeah. Hillbilly B, yeah. Victoria, eighteen fifty three. 37 she started. Oh, 37. Okay, no, this would be Victorian. So it would be Victorian. Oh, yeah, because yeah, it's an 1840s musket. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Hillbilly 2 just told us that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It has some markings on the uh, butt plate tang. Yeah, so we've got a, we've got like maybe, you know, I, I'm just guessing, but I'm a bit stupid and these guys 
some of it, but it's a considerably gun, right, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah, and we've got um, two over here, which is probably maybe a second, and I was thinking Royal Police, maybe you had a guess, but what are they, what else are the police called? Um, Hillbilly 3? No, they were Peelers. What? Peelers. Peelers in the old days. Peelers, which still starts with P, isn't it? Yeah. So they could be Royal Peelers, but we're just, no, it's probably, I'm way off the mark. That's way off, I think it's uh, Right? Yeah, but still quite nice markings. With the, with the with the rack number, this number at the bottom is possibly a rack number, isn't it? Well, yeah. this, this could be. I think this will be an English city. An English city. Maybe Richmond. Yeah. Richmond police. Maybe Richmond police uh, with a rack number. Yeah. Oh, that's quite good. Yeah, we'll yeah. go with that. Yeah. Um, it's got. There's a few chips and knocks and stuff in there, and there's got some um, oh, typical, uh, marks on here. For age, and that's yeah. that's a board arrow stamp. I'm pretty sure I can see a board arrow stamp there. Now I'm looking at it at a different yeah. angle, but I'll just I'll just yeah. So we've got it's got a it's got a name on it too. What I'm seeing, which we couldn't really see with our eye. So maybe it's a stock maker. Correct. Or a storekeeper. Or a storekeeper. Yeah. 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 So anyway, the wood looks really, really nice on it. It's got it's got that age and been there, done that sort of look to it. Yeah. But, it but it's still very sound. Yeah. No major splits, cracks. Yeah. And these these two things here are for. Oh well, these are uh, hold, your, hold your lock plate in. Lock oh, lock plate. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. These two go through and they hold the lock plate. You can see the end of one there. Sorry, I'll just have a quick look. I thought I saw something on it, but I didn't. No, that's okay. So we'll just talk about the locking mechanism before we cut wind this video down and um, the, the, or this bit, yeah. Yeah, this is a very, this became a very standard Enfield lock, which was used on the pattern 1853. And um, this one is slightly at fault. It doesn't hold on full cock, but clearly the sear spring is broken or missing because if you push the trigger forward, normally works. We not had it before, we're not getting it now. When we pushed yeah. it forward, we got it got it to lock in. It, um, may, it may be. Yeah, number one broke it. <laughs> number one broke it, and he had, had too many um, uh, whiskies. Yeah. No, well, it was hap happening oh, before. Maybe, we maybe, maybe the drunk had a few too many whiskies, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, we've got a sling swivel here, which I don't believe is original. Yeah, because they usually just had a little band or something to put these slings on. So these were quite common in the land wars, were they? Or uh, so land wars, yeah, more these land wars. Have, these yeah. would have certainly been used out here. Yeah. If you look here, yeah. there's a hole in the front of the trigger guard. Yeah, please can we, are we trying to finish the video, which we're going to finish in about two seconds. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, there would have been a sling swivel here. Yeah, sling swivel there. A metal sling swivel. And there's a hole here. Yeah. Yeah, there would have been a sling swivel in there. Yeah. Which is just a folded bit of metal. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll wrap this up now. So anyway, that's that's your gun, and that's uh, what sort of pattern, eight, uh, not a uh, 1840s game gun that's... Uh, been that and done that in New Zealand. Yeah, it's I sort of looked at the the notches in it and I thought there was notches on it, but they're just scraping marks. Yeah. I think that's where someone's been hanging it on hooks on the wall. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this gun's probably been here 150 years. And in New Zealand? Yeah. Very probably was used in the land wars. It would have been quite modern then. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And they liked these because they used to take them in the bush and they didn't get caught up in the trees, the more shorter carbines, didn't they? Yeah, well, a, a three-band is a long rifle and in thick bush and manuka, yeah, it was hard work. So they were running around with these in the, what, the 1850s 1850s, in New Zealand? 1850s, 60s. 1850s, 60s, when the land wars were full on. Yeah. So if you want this gun, and I hope you spend a bit of money on it, it's got good patina, it's a really nice gun. You got a true land wars gun that has been there, and geez, you could just as this gun could talk. Any more comments after that, Mister Hillbilly one? Uh, no, I'd just really rather get this to work. But um... yeah, we did have it going before, <laughs> but um, it is what it is. It did stick in it, but uh, it not works going intermittently. Intermittently, yeah. But the yeah. sear spring is obviously broken. Yeah, and that can very hard to fix or. 
No, it's no. not a big job. Not a big job. Yeah. But I need money in the bank, so we need to get this thing sold. It's yep. great walling. It still looks the part. Yep. If you want to get it fixed, we could probably get it fixed for, say, what, uh, $200? Yeah, I think about 200 Yeah. Yeah. I'd be way less than that. Oh, but yeah. But if we'll... someone's got a sea of spring, yeah. Yeah, if someone's got a sea of spring. Yeah, yeah. Okay, then. Thank you very much. Hello. Yeah. That's all good? Hi. Done?